I don't know how much of that I wasn't recording, but I'll be damned if that don't look like an orange hydrogen flame. What's up, fellas? I got an interesting comment the other day. Somebody said, why don't you check the temperature of your oxyhydrogen torch? And they've got a great point. For the past 10 years, we've just been believing all the HHO fanatics saying it's a 5,000 degree flame. I don't believe it. Uh, maybe it is. I would, I would believe like three to 4,000, but I don't know about the 5,000. So we have a very large oxyhydrogen torch here, or an electrolyzer, I should say. This is a 10,000 watt unit. It can do a lot more than that, but the plug that you plug it into the wall, it's only rated for 10,000 watts, so I'm not trying to burn the place down. And the wires in the walls can't handle much more than that, so it, it draws more power than I can give it. And some people have also asked me, why don't you just use your massive electrolyzer to run a forge? And I could maybe make a really tiny smelting furnace out of that thing, but the truth is, it's only 10,000 watts. And for contrast, when I melt brass to like make these little small parts that I gotta make, I'm using 180,000 watts of power to do that. And it takes about 11 minutes of 180,000 watts of power. But it would take at least maybe 40,000 watts out of this thing to do what I'm doing with those other units. So that's kind of the reason. It's, it's an energy issue. So here's what I got. Let's check this out. We have here an S-type thermal couple that I am willing to sacrifice for the commenter because I'm interested in this too. And it was a great comment. Like, why haven't we done this? So I don't know how many watts we're going to do yet. Probably only going to do about 3,000 for this test because much more than that will utterly destroy this tip. So we're going to go with a 0 .030 tip. Okay, I turned off about 10,000 watts of light there. This poor thing's ready for an overhaul. All the electronics are doing a bunch of weird stuff because they're from China. And I, I figured out why Chinese electronics are so unreliable. I watched a couple of videos of guys taking electronics like this, taking the circuit boards, throwing them in a puddle of tin, scraping all the electronic compart components off, and then washing them in water. And then you have women separating these components, at which point they are soldered right back on to electronics and sold to American consumers. And the problem I have with that is the heat stress that's put on the equipment. So for those of you who have not seen this thing, we have a massive 48 plate electrolyzer here. Um, the surface area of this electrolyzer is 48 inches by 96 inches. So it's a four foot by eight foot sheet of material was cut up to make that electrolyzer. So there we are, 3,000 watts, that's 16 amps. That's the flow rate we're running with, that's liters per minute, but this is hydrogen, so that's not very accurate. That's what the gas production looks like. That stuff you see floating around in there is a sticker that was on one of those pipes. So it's a pretty massive gas production there. I've got four of those holes putting out bubbles. That's an overflow tank that mitigates foam. Here's a better look at the massive electrolyzer. This thing has a cooling radiator and a pump. I'll be damned if that don't look like an orange hydrogen flame. You know what? Ooh, that is hot. All right, you guys are gonna kill me. This damn camera stand is very janky. And when I loaded the camera into the stand, it turned the freaking camera off. We missed the entire experiment, guys. I totally dropped the ball. I mean, I'm, I'm not gonna expect you to believe me, 
we got up to like 2600 degrees Fahrenheit and then the thing died. It melted a hole right through it. Man, that burns me bad. It's been a long time since that happened. I'm sitting here talking to myself and everything, thinking the camera's rolling. In this case, trying ain't good enough. <laughs> Man. Oh, that's, dude. That is sad. We melted the thermal couple anyway, so we're going to have to find a material, like a spectrum of materials, and then try and melt those materials. All right, guys. All right, I can't go out like that. We, we're going to try a K-type thermal couple. I know this is a stupid idea. We don't burn one up. We might as well burn them both up. I can't believe that happened. 15 amps again. Man, that just kills me. And this ain't gonna go over very well either. We're gonna end up melting this poor thing. I don't even understand how it works. It's all twisted together about three inches. Well, we lost it. It's dropping out because the machine doesn't have It's running off a chart. Let's try something else here. This probably ain't gonna work. Damn it, this ain't gonna work. All right, oh well. No go. All right. Right here, we have a piece of silicon carbide. You can see the crystals. But this is the real deal. It's almost recrystallized silicon carbide. So we're going to try and dull this tip. If we can dull that tip and melt it even just a little bit, that means we hit about 2,700 Celsius. All right, here we go. 3,000 watts silicon carbide melting point on the order of 2,700 Celsius. It does not appear to care at all that we're doing this to it. It is laughing at me. I kind of hope that it doesn't melt it because we need an upper echelon. Let me turn this up. All right, there's 16 amps. I didn't see no melting, dude. Maybe a touch. Can we weld silicon carbide? It ain't melting it, fellas. It ain't doing it. I'm seeing some weird growths now. Some little nodules have grown. All right. It's just not doing it. See those little spheres? They were like rolling off of there. But that's still pretty sharp. I'm not calling that melted, guys. That's still a pretty sharp tip. Maybe just a subtle bit of some kind of change. I don't know, should we try a bigger freaking flame? Like an insane honker? You do realize this thing's terrifying, right? Like this is a scary, it's like operating a shotgun <laughs> that you've never fired before that may blow up on you so i have a larger tip here man i don't know if i want to try that that's freaking just damn right terrifying right there sure is oh dude this is gonna suck i don't want to do it 
I'm scared. All right, we're maxing out at about 26 amps. That's 5,000 watts of power. Here it goes. Oh, wow. What the hell is that? Oh, man, we got to hurry. I think it's melting it. Well, not really. Yeah, it's just not touching it, dude. It doesn't care. It's laughing at us. Whoa. Of course that happened. We're going to have a hard time looking at that piece now, but here is some um, refractory brick with a 3,000 degree melting point, and it is melting right away. I don't know if you guys can see it or not. Okay, we're gonna catch the building on fire. Oh, there it went. Now you see why I didn't wanna do that. Did you guys hear that? We just popped it off. Not cool, man, not cool. I think we just got some water in the line. We just blew that whole chamber up. Did you hear that pop? Not my idea of a good time. So we were doing 27, 26 amps, uh, about 5,600 watts of power. And we did not melt the silicon carbide. But we had the 3000 degree refractory was dripping down like caramel. You can see that drop almost fell. It immediately started to melt this 3000 degree refractory. 3000 Fahrenheit. Maybe it did just barely. I did not see any melting taking place. Now maybe some of the matrix melted. This is a, a material that's got a bunch of weird stuff in it. Let's turn some light on here. The new iPhone sucks. Don't buy it. So that was a perfectly sharp edge, and we brutalized it forever. I saw some very minimal, very minimal melting going on. I'm not going to give it to it. I'm, I'm not going to do it. I mean, I think... We were seeing like a matrix. Did you see that little round bead that came out? It formed this little sphere of something. But that's about it. Pretty freaking frightening. I usually only run that tip with propane gas modification. When you mix the two gases, it's, it's much safer of a machine. I'd never use pure HHO for anything. All right, so... Silicon carbide, 2,730 Celsius. I don't think we hit that. Fire brick comes in at 2,200 Celsius, and we did melt the fire brick. Right here, this is an actual piece of authentic fire brick. Ouch. And we did melt that. It turned it black, where it was just boring holes in the fire brick. All right, fellas, so in conclusion, the people who were saying that an oxyhydrogen flame hits 5,000 degrees were, were wrong. Um, we were not, in my eyes, melting the silicon carbide. Yeah, there was a couple little spheres that generated, but we weren't getting a melting in the sense that we saw material melt. We barely dulled that sharp splinter. So... That's kind of what we got. We're, we're definitely above 3,900 degrees Fahrenheit. But we're not quite as hot as that. So it's not 5,000 degrees. It's probably 
you know, definitely in the 4,000 degree range.